this is this is a wonderful thing for us. Wow. It's a wonderful thing for us because this is our first public appearance with the show actually being on the air, and um, it's really a party for us. It's a celebration of all the hard work that we put into the show for a year and a half, and uh, it's it's great to see all you guys coming out for it. It means that we must be doing something right. So. Um, that's very neat. I'm going to introduce to you the, uh, the people that give voice and give drama and do great justice to all of our scripts and make us look good. Uh, let's see. First and foremost, uh, I'm going to start with a guy who plays the bane of Peter Parker's existence. Um, he's constantly pushing around. He's constantly shoving Peter around. He's just a pain in the ass. <laughs> and like all good screen bad guys, he's played by an absolutely wonderful human being, Patrick Laberto. Next is a gentleman, where would Spider-Man be without, without his villains? Uh, we decided that we needed to have not just one villain here today, but we needed to have two great Spider-Man villains here today. Uh, this is a man who portrayed, well, we were able to have two here today, but we were able to do it by just simply having one person come, because this man portrays two, two of our great villains. Um, he plays Mysterio, and he plays Craven the Hunter. So I'd like to introduce Greg Berger. Yes. 
And of course, playing our lead character and doing a fantastic job is a gentleman who is a wonderful actor on camera as well as off camera. Uh, he's had a hell of a great year. There was a variety of about a week and a half ago that had on the cover the fact that Brady Bunch was the number one movie in America. And then two, three pages in was the fact that Spider-Man was the number one show on Saturday morning. So I hope he's gotten that issue framed and bronzed and uh, whatnot and not on his wall. Uh, this is a great person, a great actor, and a good friend, uh, ladies and gentlemen, Chris Barnes, who plays Spider-Man. This is 
but I have to believe as the writer that Harry is angry. I wonder if any woman will ever let me touch her as long as I continue to have these funny red waves in my hair. <laughs> Assassins, and I'll let, you, I'll let him tell you about it a little later on, but um, he is absolutely brilliant. You get to hear him sing, you get to hear him perform. Uh, it's, it's a great play for those of you who can catch it. <laughs> Felicia Hardy. Now, you know, uh, one of the big changes that I made in the show was deciding to use Felicia Hardy instead of Gwen Stacy, and we can talk about that. Uh, there are a lot of reasons for that, but one of the things uh, is that Felicia I felt brought to the show a whole new personality. She's wealthy, she's, she seems to be not terribly deep a character. I know, I know, we're expecting to watch her grow as a personality. But my, the line that I think really sums her up is in Spider Slayers 1, for those of you who saw it, where this big society event that Felicia has put together is being completely destroyed by a gigantic you know, one story called Mechanical Monster. And there's a great moment where Felicia looks at this monster as it's just destroying everything in sight and turns toward her. She looks up at it and she says, You! Go away! You're ruining my party! <laughs> you can write a line like that, but you really have to have in mind the sort of deeper, innermost thoughts of that character. You, know, you, you can't just treat a character like she's just on the surface and just very superficial. So I'd like to share with you what Felicia is really thinking at that moment. You! Go away! You're ruining my party! <laughs> Hey, step aside, Judy Parker. Felicia's not interested in a limp like you. She's looking for a muscular, handsome sports hero, a jock, a real man like me. Less than myself, 
to do my bidding. Prepare yourself, world. Mysterio will soon be ruler of all these affairs. Your fate is sealed. <laughs> Yeah, it is. 
animated series and then also the live action Spider-Man. I would love to do that. Absolutely. Okay, then it's just yeah. He wants to know when Carnage is going to come on. Do you have any plans for Carnage? Yes, we do. As a matter of fact, we're writing that right now. It's very funny. We were in a good position. We got an episode for 65 episodes right up front. And uh, the good news is, that, you know, we're, we're well into that 65. In fact, we're actually right now working on season three. The bad news is, I don't know if the 65 episodes is going to allow us to do everything that there is to do in the Spider-Man universe. But uh, we're going to try. And yes, uh, Carnage is coming. We are doing it. Uh, and it will probably be in season three. Okay, great. Yeah. I like that. In answer to, to that question that John just posed about whether we can do all the stories, uh, based on the success we're currently having, having with the show, we may do 90 episodes in order to get all your favorite stories. Of course, of course, none of us will be alive by the end. <laughs> She wants to know what's the best way to become a voiceover talent, voiceover artist. I would say, uh, given the trend toward uh, more cinematic reality and animation, become an actor first, um, and, and put the emphasis on on the acting. The rest will take care of itself. Uh, breakdowns for these characters and characters in contemporary animation are so detailed that, that they resemble, they're at least uh, as detailed, if not more detailed, than on-camera breakdowns for characters. These things are thought out very three-dimensionally. Uh, we're given quirks of a character, histories of a character, uh, and enough material to really fuel an actor to, to, to uh, take advantage of, of uh, all of that material which is given up front. As far as, as, far as the how-tos, obviously it begins with stands out, that there are agents, there are submissions, everything else resembles any, any other submission process in the acting field. You know, I'd like to ask Greg, you've been, you've been doing lots of voices for a while, um, and, uh, and I know that Mark hasn't here to speak very highly, he says that you're one of the best people in the business. Um, have you noticed a change in the business as far as voiceover is concerned over the last couple of years? Um, I would say the changes that, that I noticed, I feel like um, classic voices, which have always been appealing, will always be appealing. They, they have the same interest level that they've always had. Um, but as, as uh, the animation becomes a little more abrasive, some, some styles, like anything else, if you just study the trends of, of what's going on, there's a lot of uh, more offbeat things being approached. Um, the, I've been doing Garfield and Friends for some years now, and, and the classic cartoons still have all of the draw that they always had. It just, uh, it's watching trends, it's just like watching trends in film or television, it's part of the preparation of a voice actor to, is, is to sort of figure out what's out there. Um, things are happening a little faster now. Uh, there's more sort of cynicism in some characters, more hipness in, in some characters, just as there are in situations. Um, I think that, that sort of MTV reality is affected animation just like it's affected everything else. Uh, there's a lot of quick cuts, changes, and um, the people who stay active in the field sort of learn to, uh, to change with the changes. Okay, let me add one thing to that. These brilliant actors here have learned to put their acting on tape because, as, as you know, they're not seen. So they can't use expressions that we would normally see them on camera. They have learned to put all that acting into strictly their voice performance. And that's a quality that's even more difficult at times than the regular uh, on-camera performances. Yeah, my question is, will Spider-Man be teamed with any other superheroes in these uh, future shows? Yes, lots. Um, we are in a very fortunate position on this show in that we are Marvel and we are producing the show, so we can pretty much put anyone in the Marvel Universe in this show. Um, now, we have to be a little careful with that because this is the Spider-Man show. And I want to make 
make sure that we're not doing moral team up. You know, uh, uh, I want it always to be centered around Spider-Man, and we all pay a lot of attention to that. But um, we are having a lot of guest stars, and you really have to watch because you never know who's going to turn up, uh, and I think we'll surprise you. Okay. <laughs> of course, everyone knows that the Spider-Man show features the Spider-Man main villains, such as Dr. Octopus, Green Goblin, so on like that. But I, I was thinking maybe to consider that it would be really cool if you dug up some of the older Spider-Man and short-lived characters like Banjo, White Tiger, or Slide, and maybe to order at least one episode of them. And my other question was, if you consider maybe having crossover stories with the X-Men or Marvel Legends show, Um, I'll answer the first and then Rob will answer the second. I actually, um, I am a fan, I'm a Spidey fan as well as, as uh, you know, writing the show. For me, the fun part is digging up all of these obscure characters and doing stuff with them. Um, for instance, who would have thought that we would have gone on the air with Never Win? You know, the big, the big controversy was, well, what, 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 were we going to do Gwen, were we going to do Mary Jane? And then Deborah Whitman shows up. I like to do that kind of thing. So there's actually a greater chance of ending up with a, with, with a very strange one-shot character. Um, for instance, right now we're working with a character called Madame Webb. And she turned up you know, very briefly in the 1980s, uh, late 1970s perhaps. So we're going to do a lot of stuff like that. You'll see a lot of strange characters and villains. In answer to the uh, second part of your question about the X-Men, uh, we have a two-parter in our second season uh, in which they come into play, actually, Spidey seeks, seeks them out, uh, looking uh, to solve some uh, new problems he's having at that time. The whole second season is, uh, is concerned with Spidey uh, turning into uh, various things that have happened. <laughs> We have, we have a 13 part second season and uh, it's, it's, it's really fun because we got to do an entire serial. But we're going to keep it a secret. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, hi guys. Uh, I have a show. I love Spider Man, the old series, the new series. Um, uh, two questions. Um, Secret Wars to everyone, and they look somewhat receptive. 
So as of this moment, it looks like we're going to do a, a somewhat Spidey-centric version of Secret Wars. Um, as far as the alien costume is concerned, we, we do explain where it comes from. It's different from the Secret Wars origin, but I think it's in keeping with the whole idea of who Venom is and where he comes from. And I think you'll enjoy it. Uh, but we had to move things around a little bit in order to accommodate the needs of getting a series on the arrow. To those of you who are on the side, I'm sorry I can't get to you the, uh, the, the line that stretched that long. Okay. Yeah. Um, are you going to do the Venom Lethal Protector thing, whether it's like a five-wheeler or a symbiote? Um, the Venom Lethal Protector thing. Actually, we, we kind of have to go a little bit slower than the comic book can. Uh, the answer is, are we going to do that? I don't know. We're only about halfway through our episodes. We're not even halfway through our episodes. So the answer could be yes, if it makes good dramatic sense for a TV show. Um, so, you know, you can never rule anything out. Do we have any immediate plans to do that now? Will you be doing Maximum Carnage? Uh, I'm reading Maximum Carnage. I'm rereading Maximum Carnage right now in the uh, trade paperback. I don't know that I begin to know how to do that. <laughs> uh, if I could find a story in there somewhere. Uh, <laughs> uh, will we use those villains in something? Yes. Will we maybe do a version of it? Possibly. But um, if, if there's no way we could translate it from the page to the screen. Or it just wouldn't work in our format. Yeah, but additionally, we have the problem of uh, airing this for children, you know, on, on network television, and they have certain restrictions. And quite honestly, Carnage has almost no redeeming quality, so he's a hard character to put on the air. Yeah, do you have any information on the live action uh, Spider Man film, James Cameron's plan? Uh, the only thing I would say is that he's still planning to do it. Uh, it seems as though there are some legal problems with going forward with it, which hopefully will be worked out. I'm sure he'll do a great job. In some episodes, will you have Spider-Woman? You know, it's funny. Um, um, if we can find a way to do it and do it well, yeah, I wouldn't mind having Spider-Woman. You know, that Spider-Woman right now is, I think, a part of the Marvel Action Hour. And, um, you know, if you want to see her, you can see her there. But yeah, I would like to have a Spider-Woman. Yes, yeah, so do you want to do anything with the Cosmic Adventures? Yeah. Yeah, the answer is yes. We're going to get very cosmic in uh, Season 4. And uh, we are going to be Cosmic Spider-Man. Are you planning on doing a uh, feature-length uh, film for the anime series? Well, once again, yeah, once again, <laughs> once again, uh, it is something that we've discussed. Uh, there, there are just certain uh, things that have to take place uh, regarding you know, money, <laughs> things like that. Uh, you know, to do a really good feature today uh, costs quite a bit. You expect something really well done in the theater, and uh, we would like to deliver that to you. Also, we have to plan it in terms of the live action feature, and we don't want to uh, do something that would in any way jeopardize that or vice versa. So, but it, but it is something that we would like to do. Spider-Man has been missing um, a lot of other characters like Fantastic Four, Avengers like that. Do they plan on showing up on the show? Um, yeah, if the question was about Fantastic Four and the Avengers, and we definitely mentioned them. Um, and we, we will have, I think, um, some appearance by some members of the Fantastic Four of the show and probably some appearance by some of the Avengers, especially if we do the Secret Wars. Um, so yeah, it's, it's not out of the question. Well, he just asked my question, I was gonna ask, but first of all, uh, congratulations, it's a great show, the artwork is really fantastic, and uh, good reference, uh, yes, it is, that was a good reference. Right? <laughs> thank, you. Yeah, thank you very much, we appreciate your support. I probably got here a little late, but did anybody ask any question about the possibility of an X-Men movie uh, in the uh, Wizard magazine? They cast their own for all the playing parts. 
is that just something that somebody wants to talk about, or is it really going to happen in the future? Um, there are at this moment about 14 Marvel movies in some form of pre-production, uh, either in script or, or maybe in summary of a little further along, in summary even a little you know, further behind. Um, so everything that you can probably think of as being transformed into movies is in, is in the works. X-Men is one of them that's actually fairly, um, they're working on it pretty heavily. Uh, Richard Donner is involved. And um, I know for a fact that there have been many drafts and many scripts and they are actively working on it. Uh, so yeah, it's going to happen. There's no casting yet, nothing at all. It's, they're just trying to work on the script. Uh, this is a question for the voice actors. We all know Christopher from, of course, pretty much movie and, and the old TV show Starman. But like, I like to hear about what some of the other voice actors have done on television and or other animated series and voice actors. Told me, I didn't know she did it, and um, I gave it to her for her birthday the other day. 